and welcome to Mac Attack 001 or my channel here on YouTube. Today we're uh, here with uh, Jason Hardy, the line developer for Shadowrun. And hello. we're here to discuss. Yeah, hello. Uh, we're here to discuss Shadowrun 5th edition with Jason. So it's here. Uh, well, it's virtually here. It's just around the corner. Really close to How you. Soon? <laughs> How soon? I don't have a specific date. Uh, we are going to have some uh, special advanced copies at Origins next week. So we'll have those on sale. Um, and then the full release will be coming shortly thereafter, but I don't have a specific date yet. We want to make sure that the printer gets everything done and that everything works out because we're doing a few different things in the printing. So once we know it's going to work out and we have books in the warehouse, we'll let the, everyone know the release date. Okay. Okay. So now you've posted up three previews of uh, fifth edition so far. Now, where can people find those at? You can go to shadowruntabletop.com. Uh, that's where we have our blog where we uh, release all of the information and describe the previews. Uh, the previews themselves you can get either through the Battle Shop, which is uh, www.battlecore.com slash shop, uh, and just look for the Shadowrun previews, or go to drivethroughrpg.com and look for Shadowrun previews that are there, and they're free. Excellent. So tell us about uh, the previews. The first one is has uh, some background material, kind of fluff type, uh, and a little bit of a look at uh, the artwork. Yeah, first one we wanted to give kind of just an impression of the look and feel we're going for in 5th edition. Uh, the color scheme we're using, it's much more red uh, as opposed to uh, previous editions, blue. And just some of the art we're going with. Uh, the artist and our art director did some great work in defining some of the look of Shadowrun 5, and we wanted to share that with the fans out there. And we also have some fiction and some of the flavor trying to show what we're trying to do with Shadowrun 5th Edition and kind of bring back some of that sharper-edged uh, rawness that has always been associated with Shadowrun. Uh, now, the second uh, preview, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the second preview, we did the entire uh, game concepts chapter. That's the chapter of the book that outlines the basic things you're going to use, you know, what a test is, what a hit is, uh, a new concept which is called limits uh, that limit the amount of hits you can count on a test. Uh, talked about the uses of edge and all the things like that so you get the, the basic outline of how the game is going to be structured and you get that entire chapter in that preview. And the third one? The third one just came out and that one we wanted to give you a look at the character generation system we're using in Shadowrun 5. Uh, we're using a priority system in 5th edition, and so you get uh, a number of pages outlining some of the basics of the priority system. You get the table for it and see how the values are going to get assigned, so they'll get a, a preview of what you can do with the new priority system. Now, there, there has been a little bit of pushback, I think, from some of the uh, uh, playtesters, uh, but you are planning on including uh, the older point by system. Uh, tell us when we can expect to see that again. Yeah, we, uh, we went with priority because it was faster and seemed a little easier uh, to get people into the game. And we did make some modifications to it to also make it a little more robust than past priority systems so you can do a, a broader range of characters with it. Uh, but that said, there are people who still prefer a point by system for the flexibility it gives you. So we are going to be developing that in uh, a product that will be coming out probably within a year of the release of 5th edition. Okay. So speaking of other releases, what can we expect after 5th edition? Uh, one of the immediate things that will be coming after 5th edition is the introductory box set. We wanted uh, to really give new players a chance to get involved in Shadowrun and get a feel for the rules, so we have an intro box set that will be coming very close on the heels to uh, the actual core book. 
uh, and it'll have adventures, it'll have pre-generated characters, it'll have a simplified rule book, all sorts of things to just get people right into the world if they want to play Shadowrun. Uh, we're going to have an introductory adventure called Splintered State and a source book called Stolen Souls that will uh, talk about some plot elements and also give you some hints, tips, techniques, and gear to use in extraction missions. When you got to get someone out of one place and put them somewhere else, this will help you do it. Excellent. What about uh, like the magic book, the matrix book, the rigging book? Yep, definitely going to be having those. The first one out of the shoot will be the uh, combat-oriented book where we'll give you more weapons options, more combat options, things like that. I don't have a final title on that because none of the titles I've thought of so far uh, I like. But I'll get one soon, and that'll be coming later in uh, 2013. Excellent. Have you any plans about revamping or revisiting... Uh the firearm uh, generation system that we had back in the third edition, late in third edition, as I recall. Yeah, we've talked about that. One of the things we tried to do with fifth edition when, uh, when building the gear and building everything is to try to have uh, a structure, a mathematical structure and some ways of doing it that could easily translate into building kits for people playing their own games. Um, we don't have that fully fleshed out yet, but at least the, the structure is in place. So that is something we'd like to visit down the road. I don't know if it'll be in the first combat source book, uh, but somewhere down the line you could be seeing things that'll help you build your own vehicles, build your own weapons, and things like that. Well, that makes me happy. So I, I guess um, what I'd like to follow up with is what about the new incarnation of Shadowrun 5th edition really excites you? Oh, there's so much. I was just thinking I need to do a blog post of some of the just cool things as I'm flipping through the book uh, and, and doing things for the box set. Uh, some of the things that just leap out at me that I like a lot. You know, from little things uh, like an ability or, or uh, an action called reckless spell casting that we introduce that lets you uh, allows you to cast spells quicker as long as you're willing to take considerably more drain for casting that spell and just the name reckless spell casting and the ability to be able to do more if you take more punishment seemed uh, very shadow running to me and I love having that concept in the game uh, but that also feeds into the larger concepts we were trying to develop that I'm really excited about. And that's the whole theme of everything has a price and the trade-offs you have to make to become an excellent Shadowrunner. Uh, you know, we certainly want it to be possible for people to be street legends and prime runners to make themselves famous and to pull off things that no one else could do, but we want it uh, to come with a price and we want it to be difficult. So we want people to have to think about what actions they take, what gear they buy, what modifications they make to themselves, and, and how they progress so that they become what they want to be while also having to pay some sort of a price. Because that, to me, seems like a lot of what the Shadowrun universe is about, is uh, you know, no one comes out pure, no one comes out unsullied. Uh, when he was at the Gen Con Shadowrun seminar, uh, last summer, Jordan Weissman talked a lot about the noir roots of Shadowrun. And uh, that has a, a very noir sensibility in that you don't come out clean. If you're going to try to survive or even try to prosper, there is some price you have to pay. And uh, we want people to think about how willing they are to pay it. And I'm really excited about the options we built into the game to convey that atmosphere. If you had to choose one thing that you wish that you could do over for Shadowrun 5th edition or uh, make better, what would that be? Ooh, tough question. Um, some of it would be my process uh, as a developer. Um, you know, I've, I've uh, had a lot to learn over the past three years and developing 5th edition was different than anything I'd ever done. And so I learned a lot about 
uh, how to go about that process, different ways of working with people and different ways of incorporating ideas with people and uh, hopefully by the end of the process I got pretty good at some of those things but it would have been really helpful to be good at them at the beginning of the process <laughs> and it would have smoothed the way a lot. Um, if we look at specific rules things, it's tough to say because I'm, I'm so much in it and I'm happy with the way things worked out. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what I would have done differently because I, I, well just one thing that I would have maybe liked to tinker with a little more and see if I could have made it work is we tried a different initiative system that was based on action points and in some ways it had kind of a board game feel to it and it gave a lot of options that I liked. It gave a lot of flexibility for how you could choose to use your actions. It gave a lot of possibilities for gear that could give you more action points or take them away. Uh, I think it made initiative passes more balanced than they've been in fourth edition. And so it had a lot of cool possibilities to it, but it also introduced a lot of record keeping and a lot of uh, just tracking of how many points you had and how many points different things cost. And so in playtesting, the playtesters generally came back and said what we had wasn't working. It was too cumbersome. It was too complicated. And so we decided to go with a different initiative system altogether and take the action points out to do something that was simpler and more streamlined. Uh, if I had maybe more time, I maybe would have looked for a way to use the action points in a way that would have been simpler and would have worked. I don't know if I could have come up with it. I don't know if it would have been as simple as I wanted it to be. It might have still been cumbersome, but it would have been fun to try. It's uh, always interesting to hear uh, from uh, line developers and even uh, you know uh, game designers uh, what they would have done different. You know, everyone has that story. Uh, when I was uh, talking with Mike Mulvihill. Uh, when he did third edition, he just didn't have enough time, he felt, to go back and create a mechanic that tied all four systems together. I mean, because Shadowrun basically is four systems. You have right. the physical combat, matrix, rigging, and magic. And uh, he never felt that he actually had the opportunity to tie all four of those together. And, and I'd have to agree that that always has been uh, one of the big stumbling blocks for Shadowrun is the level of complexity. Yeah. Well, and, and the, I very much sympathize with Mike uh, not having the time to tie all four of those together because that's a huge challenge and you'd need a lot of time uh, to be able to do that. Um, and that's one of the things we battled with is how simple can we make Shadowrun uh, without taking away the flavor that makes it uniquely what it is. I mean, you, you want to simplify things, you want to make it easy for players to get into. At the same time, you don't want to take away from some of the uniquely Shadowrun things that are out there. So it's a very difficult balance to walk. Yeah. So, why should people make the jump from 4th to 5th edition? Make your case. Alright, well the case I'd make is uh, that it flows, I've been talking about those four components, they do flow together better, especially the Matrix. I think we made great improvements in uh, making the Matrix more user-friendly so that right out of the gate you know as a hacker what you can do with the Matrix and how you can be a part of the group and why you need to be with the group instead of hanging out in someone's basement or out in a coffee shop somewhere. Um, I, I think the system is much improved and one of the playtesting comments that I cherish is one person who said, you know, this is the first time I ever had fun playing uh, Decker. So I, I hopefully we're making decking more fun. I'm not saying other people didn't have fun because there were great things about being a Decker in previous systems, but hopefully we made it easier to get into and, uh, and more fun to play. Um, and I think the overall uh, character focused uh, ideas that we tried to put across in Shadowrun 5 that you as a shadow runner are the person who's going to determine your success or your failure. It's your skills, it's your attributes that are going to be really at the core of it. So you have a chance to build someone who's just going to be awesome. 
and they're going to face some tough challenges. But if you can get them to that pinnacle, if you can get them to be one of the best in the world, I think it'll be a, a great feeling of accomplishment, and you'll have just a really beautiful character and have a lot of fun building that up uh, as you take them through runs. So I think that character-centric uh, mission that we've had as we've developed it will really make it a lot of fun for people to play their characters through in the long term. It's been said that, that every game system has a break point. Uh, a, the point at which a character progresses to that uh, it breaks the game. If you were to as, a, a tie a karma point value to that in Shadowrun 5th edition, what would that be? That's a tough question. I don't think I have a good answer. We had extensive play testing, but we didn't have uh, enough time to people develop characters uh, fully. Uh, as in, you know, get them to a uh, thousand karma, two thousand karma level. Um, so I don't know. I'll be interested to see as people get more advanced. We are aware because we changed the caps on skills uh, from six to twelve that it's going to be a little harder for newer runners to compete with runners that have been around for a while. And so for organized play, uh, we're going to be developing two tiers in the mission system so that you can have missions players in one tier and prime runners in another tier so they can play at people more their level. Uh, because those who are in the higher ranks are going to be even tougher for those who are just starting out to deal with and we want to make sure everyone's able to face a challenge at their level. Um, but where the system breaks, I don't know. I'm sure people will tell me. <laughs> that is one of the benefits of going to conventions. Speaking of which, you mentioned Origins. What other conventions uh, should we look for to see you at so that we can tell you where the game system breaks? <laughs> if you want to uh, track me down and tell me exactly what's wrong with Shadowrun 5th Edition, uh, remember to look for a name badge that says Stephen Bull Ratkovich. Oh, you are and, me. And, and tell, that'll be me. And then, then regale me with everything that's wrong with this system, and it'll be great. Um, no, I will be uh, at Gen Con, of course. Um, I don't know what conventions of the big ones I'll be going to, but I know Catalyst will have a presence uh, at PAX East and PAX uh, Prime coming up. I will be at uh, Con on the Cob in Ohio in October. Um... And that's all I know of for sure at the moment. But we have expanded our uh, convention presence. I know Catalyst went to Board Game Geek Con for the first time this year. And so hopefully that will be something we do more of. And uh, we're trying to see if we can get people to Dragon Con. We'll see if that happens. But that's kind of up in the air. Okay. Oh no, your video's frozen. Are you there? Yes, you, you were froze up for a second there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, uh, my internet connection involves uh, smoke signals, so nice for that. Um, A strong wind can throw things off. Yes, yes. Um, somebody once said something about crickets farting. I don't know. But, <laughs> um, okay, so we uh, touched on the conventions. Uh, everything has a price. We've talked about that. Um, is there anything else that you'd uh, like to touch on uh, 
in terms of uh, Shadowrun 5th edition? Uh, just that I'm really excited about the full range of uh, Shadowrun products coming out and that there's different ways to approach Shadowrun no matter what kind of gamer you are to get involved in the universe and hopefully if you like your first taste of it uh, to get involved at an ever deeper level we've got the deck building game Crossfire which will be coming out soon uh, we have a board game called Hostile Takeover in the works and a miniatures game called Sprawlgangers in the works so if you're a board gamer card gamer uh, or miniatures gamer, you'll have a way to play in the Shadowrun universe, and if you like it, then you can dive into the introductory box set and play that way. Uh, if you're a computer gamer, Shadowrun Returns should be out uh, in June. Then the browser-based game, Shadowrun Online, should come later this year, and we'll, we're tying it into their plot. We've got a lot of devious things going on with them. And so hopefully we'll get people playing Shadowrun in a whole bunch of different forms, and if they like it, they'll get as deep into it as they want and come on in and play the full role-playing game and get the full-on Shadowrun experience. I'm really excited to see how it's going to all work together. That's true. You, uh, it has been said that uh, 2013 is truly the year of Shadowrun. Uh, with everything that um, Jordan Weissman's doing with his company, uh, and you mentioned uh, the... Uh, online um, company. Uh, Cliffhanger Productions. <laughs> Cliffhanger Productions, I'm sorry. Uh, getting locked out of uh, Google <laughs> Hangout uh, freaked me out. So I'm trying to. Hey, for a sec. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, the um, Shadowrun uh, box set. Uh, uh, that has the packs in it. Uh, runner's Toolkit. The Runner's Toolkit. You're going to be updating that, correct? Yes, absolutely. Uh, runner's Toolkit is an incredibly valuable tool. Whenever I play uh, Shadowrun 4, I immediately got that box right out, put the cheat sheets in the middle of the table. I always have the big book of uh, gear tables by my computer open at all times for reference. Uh, so it's really handy, and we want to make sure that that comes back to 5th edition, so we're already working on the plans to uh, make a 5th edition version of it. Excellent. Now, in terms of the PDF uh, side of things, how soon, I mean, is there going to be a fairly smooth transition from 4th to 5th in terms of support material? Yeah, I think so. Um, first of all, we're going to be working on a character converter document. I've already got the, the skeleton of that in place. Uh, that will make it fairly simple, famous last words, to convert your character from 4th to 5th and bring them right over. Uh, and we're also going to have uh, a fair number of products that are going to be dual-statted uh, at Origins, hopefully, if everything goes right, cross your fingers and all. Uh, we'll have a compilation of some uh, conventions missions from previous years that we have dual statted. So all of the characters in there and all of the critters and everything else are statted for both 4th both edition and 5th edition. So you'll be able to play that in whatever edition you want. And we'll do that for a few other products. Uh, so you get stats in both editions just to make it easier to play where you want and still get some things in 4th edition if you're still playing there for a while so you don't feel like we're totally abandoning you, but then if you want to use that product to help you make the transition to 5th, then it's there for you. Excellent. Um, I did kind of want to touch on this because uh, being a political junkie and a news junkie, um, recent events has uh, definitely caught my attention without getting into the political side of it and just focusing on the Shadowrun-esque um, flavor of, uh, let's say, the NSA's uh, prison program. Have you uh, been keeping up on that the last uh, day or so? Or The, uh, the headlines never lack for Shadowrun-esque news lately, and uh, that is not necessarily the most encouraging thing in the world. <laughs> We, we wanted Shadow Run to be a dystopia, not a reality. Um, so, yeah, it, it's interesting to see all sorts of news that has kind of uh, Shadow Run esque implications from the, the story you mentioned. Uh, there's someone who actually does a lot of uh, work on the Battletech side, Battletech demo side, who keeps updating me 
on the stories of the mayor of uh, Toronto and his possible videos of drug use and just it's a story that the rabbit hole gets deeper and deeper every time you look at it and it's just bizarre and and he just keeps saying could this get any more shadow run with all the cover ups and the twisted doings and weirdness and it's uh, yeah there's I mean if you're looking for inspiration for shadow run plots these days you don't have to look far it's all out there it's true uh, I was uh catching up on uh, some stories and I noticed that the NSA is building uh, what I believe it's called the UDC which is the Utah Data Center and this thing is massive I mean it's gonna take like millions of gallons of water to cool these uh, supercomputers that they're uh, uh, going to be installing in this facility um, we don't really know what the facility is supposed to do but with the NSA we can imagine yeah, and I've always thought that one of the main uh, themes of that Shadowrun is power and how you get power and what you do with power. And uh, that's, you know, a, a long-standing theme in reality. And we're seeing it play out as information more and more becomes power. We see how people try to use information to, to flex that power. And it's, it's really interesting to see the different ways people do to try to collect information, try to use information, and see how they can leverage it. It's an interesting time. Truly is. Uh, <laughs> I uh, find it uh, interesting because uh, some individuals have said that uh, Shadowrun doesn't feel as poignant today as uh, it, it feels like they're playing a game from the 80s and, and I, I don't quite know how to respond to them on that. Uh, what would you say to somebody? Um, I think I understand where they're coming from because there are elements of the basic Shadowrun sur surrounding that were firmly rooted in the cyberpunk of the 80s. Um, I just think we need to find ways to update some of the darkness because I think if you look around, there are plenty of ways that we can look at the overlap of uh, governments and corporations and power structures and technology and find interesting dark areas to play in. Uh, we've gotten over some of the roots of cyberpunk, some of that, you know, unease with technology. We, we are comfortable using technology, and we're comfortable having technology part of our lives, and some of the even uh, having technology as part of your body doesn't seem quite as strange as it did in the first days of Shadowrun. And so if you try to play off that, you're not going to get quite as far, I don't think. But I think current events are showing us that there's still plenty of room to work with in showing how uh, technology and power aren't necessarily good and aren't necessarily bad, but are as good or bad as the people who know how to use them. And Shadowrun, you have a lot of bad people in charge, and so if we can show how the bad people use those for their own ends, and how that shapes the world, I think there's still a lot of fertile room in the present to play with. I hope you're not inferring that Damien Knight or Lafleur or Richard Villers is anything but pure. They are saints of the earth, and they are only looking out for the shareholders' good. I mean, the whole earth's good, not just shareholders. Everyone. Yes. Never imply anything else. <laughs> Okay, well, um, I think we've hit all the top points. I um, want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Uh, and I hope everyone uh, will thank you because this isn't the first time we've tried this. This is number three. Um, there were technical issues previously, and we'll leave it at that. This is why we get paranoid about technology, because sometimes we see that it's actively plotting against us. <laughs> Again, thank you, Jason, for taking time out of your schedule. And um, we all, well, I, I can't speak for everybody, but for, but for myself, I am very excited to see what's new with Shadowrun 5th Edition. Well, thanks for having me, and I hope you have a lot of fun with it when you see it. Okay. Bye.